Hiding in plain sight, this toilet terror appears to be any ordinary outhouse, luring dog workers, pig splitters, and Highland herdsmen to relieve themselves. When they come within arm's reach, the fetid fiend bashes its victim over the head and snatches them up into its mouldy wooden bulk to be drowned in filth and excrement. Welcome back, everyone. This is Melv here. And this is part three of my Dungeon Degenerates as the role playing game Let's Play. And we're going to continue our journey with the Solitary Swordsman, which I decided to name him Tuco after the great movie, the great Western movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And I, can, I think everyone can see why. Uh, because this character reminds me of that Tuco character, which is also known as the Ugly. And you can see from the design of this character, it's definitely inspired by the Western cowboy with his poncho, his uh, French shirt, and also from his look as well. So. Uh, during our last gameplay, we have received a quest to escort this fighting outhouse all the way from the Watchtower to the Temple of Madness. And that quest giver uh, was this unlicensed surgeon. And during our last gameplay, we have actually successfully uh, uh, bought a carriage to hide this uh, fighting outhouse from the uh, local guards and successfully sneak outside of town. Uh, before we continue, uh, we actually need to do a bit of housekeeping. Uh, I forgot to update the pigskin port settlement level uh, because during our last encounter, we managed to save the refugee from the uh, bandit attack which gives us one more settlement level in Pigskin Port, and that brings up to a total of four. And also we forgot to roll for the quest twist counter, which uh, we need to basically see how many quest fails that we can afford during this quest. And I'm gonna roll it right now to see how many we can do. Six, okay, so that gives us six fails that we can afford before it triggers any of these quest twists. And I'm going to do so by putting this six token right next to the Temple of Madness, where we also put down that clue token as well. So uh, I think it's a good time to uh, conclude the uh, roleplay phase and we will go back to the normal uh, game pack gameplay for Dungeon Degenerates and um, we'll first obviously need to decide where we to, where we're gonna go, which route we're gonna take. Are we gonna go from the uh, Batland or we're going back to the Pigskin port and follow the road to the Bandit Camp and then to Slaver's Pass and into the Temple of Madness. Uh, so I think we are actually going to go back to Pigskin Port because uh, first of all, that is also a town, so it has a really high safe level, which means that we probably don't have to do any encounter here. Um, and we might uh, be able to, um, you know, do some tradings and so forth. So uh, obviously during our last gameplay, we also get the fatigued status. Uh, because we have tried to force march from uh, Piskin Port to Watchtower, which we did, but we failed the con uh, Constitution test, uh, meaning that we can no longer do any force march. So the only thing we can do now is basically, instead of going directly to Piskin Port, we will need to go to the road and take another turn before we can go to Piskin Port. So. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to check on the danger phrase. Okay. Cults of death 
practice necromantic rites and death things hunt the living who dare enter the catacombs. Okay, so the danger level is five and our current danger level, uh, because we are under this location where it follows the uh, foothill uh, danger level, which is two. So this is higher than our current level, meaning that we will not have any encounters. Uh, but still, we obviously have to increase the catacomb level by one. So it's already five and it will basically go to six. So it will trigger a hand of doom if we, uh, you know, if it continues to uh, increase the danger level here. So that basically concludes the uh, the, the first round, and uh, I don't think we need to enter any role playing phrase for this for this round. So we're going to just gonna continue uh, traveling to Pigskin Port. So again, we're going to move to there. I'm going to check another uh, danger cot, which is uh, Karen feeding Furmin and depraved lunatics calls infest the graveyard. And you can see that is a level six, again, meaning that we will not trigger any uh, encounter because we are still at two, but it means that the graveyard will increase to level five. Okay. So now that we are back to Pexkin Pool, I think it's time to do a bit of role playing. And um, in fact, I think what we don't know about our current task is that why this unlicensed surgeon wants to uh, escort this fighting outhouse all the way to the Temple of Madness. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask her why that's the case. Uh, but uh, first of all, I want to check on the NPC reaction, which is uh, a table that I created to see, you know, whenever a NPC reacts to yourself or your, your specific action or, or, or questions, you can roll on this table to see how they, how they react to it in general. And we're going to see how the unlicensed surgeon going to react to our question. Okay. So it is helpful for a price. So uh, it means that the unlicensed surgeon is going to tell us why she's bringing this outhouse all the way there. But in return, uh, she might actually want us to, um, uh, I would say keep, keep it as a secret uh, or something, but I don't know yet. So actually we might see what is the reason first before we decide what is the price that we need to pay. So I'm going to use the gold table over here and uh, if needed, I will also use the theme and action table on the top, but let's just roll on this first. Again, this is 2d6 tables. Uh, the uh, green dice will represent the columns and the orange will represent the row. So let's see five and a two. Okay, so beat a rifle. Okay, it's interesting, beating a rifle. Uh, that's not enough for me to tell what kind of uh, reason is that. So I'm gonna roll on the theme as well to see what it is. Two and a one, a community in action, four and a three, gain the community. Okay, um, I think it actually gives me enough. So uh, what I'm going to say is in escorting this fighting outhouse all the way from the watchtower to the Temple of Madness, uh, the unlicensed surgeon is actually looking to gain the trust of, a, uh, of the community, that is the weird community in the Highlands. So, um, but obviously we also wrote on beat a rival, which means that there is someone else that is also doing similar stuff. So they're gaining the support. They want to gain the support from the weird community. Okay. 
So uh, that's what she said. I don't know if that's true or not. If she's telling the truth or she's just lying to us, we don't know yet. But uh, we'll take her words for it for now. And uh, before I conclude the role playing phrase, actually, I'm going to do something else. I am going to visit our vermin hunter friend, which we helped in the very first Let's Play video in hiding her uh, secret identity. So she's not actually a vermin hunter, but she poses as one in the pigskin porn. And uh, obviously we know that she's working for some kind of organization and there's some forces behind her. And that's what uh, gives us the three luck as reward. And uh, I'm actually going to see her. And first of all, I guess we, we want to check what's her um, reaction to us because uh, although we succeeded in completing the mission, we actually uh, rely on intimidating a local good merchant. Um, so, you know, instead of you know, doing it um, secretively, <laughs> we might actually uh, create some enemies for of her. So we actually need to first check her reaction when she saw us uh, and see what she thinks. So, four, neutral. Okay, that's good. That means that uh, although we, uh, we 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 have been uh, uh, created quite a messy situation, she doesn't care she, as long as she hides her secret identity. She's fine with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna ask her for some help uh, in return, uh, and I'm actually gonna ask her to check on you know, who is actually the rivals of the unlicensed surgeon? Because I don't think our uh, uh, solitary resourceman, Tuko, will just take her words uh, as is. And uh, we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna roll on some, ro uh, some uh, oracle tables to see if that gives us anything. So, uh, first of all, I'm gonna roll on the NPC faction to see who is actually that uh, that rival. So I'm gonna roll on the NPC fraction in Highlands and see where it is from. It is a 2d6, so I'm gonna roll 2d6. Five. So five is heretics. Okay, interesting. So uh, the Vermin Hunter actually uh, let us know, uh, probably from her, um, you know, webs of spies or whatever it is. Uh, she tells us the information, and that is that the rival, that the unlicensed surgeon that is trying to beat, is actually from the the heretics community or the heretics faction. Okay. So what we can do is obviously we can uh, find the next unused NPC, find someone with the heretics uh, class, and then use that as the rival. But for now, I think that's good enough answer. I don't want to know more. Uh, I think you know we will just continue with the gameplay. So uh, we conclude that role playing phrase, and we are back to the board game phrase. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue moving upwards to the bandit camp so we can only, uh, obviously they were still fatigued and we're going to go to the road and we're gonna roll, uh, find the next danger card. The strange and foul smelling fishmongers whispered heretic schemes in soggy hidden cellars below the fishmonger camp. Okay, so we will have an enemy to fight because this is a level one and in our area which we are at we actually will need to um, uh, fight the enemy because I think this is sharing the same one as the uh, foothill which is still two which is still higher than level one so we're gonna find our next enemy. 
Okay, so the bird riders. Okay, it's a filth, it's a swamp, and it is also a weird as well. Interesting. So we are being hunted by this bird riders. And I wonder if that is something to do with our fighting out house. So uh, I'm gonna solve this uh, encounter first and I'm gonna come back and see if we succeeded in defeating this enemy. Okay, so we're back. Um, so I have rolled the uh, uh, attacked and defense dice and also the power dice. We have actually, uh, we took the guard stance uh, and we actually managed to defeat this bird riders because obviously uh, we rolled seven, which is under our agility of eight, which means that we can take the higher dice as the attack die. Uh, and obviously there's only six health for this character uh, so we can de defeat it in one go but unfortunately uh, actually fortunately in the defend dice we have a four so we have not uh, lost any um, any health as well and we also gain obviously the one health and the one experience from this bird riders and that concludes the uh, monster encounter but what I am actually going to say in a role playing phase is that we actually did not um, we did not just kill these bird riders. Instead, we defeated them and we kept them alive so that we can do some interrogation to see who sends them to follow us. And does it have anything to do with um, our fighting outhouse? or our unlicensed surgeon. So, uh, I'm gonna roll on the... So, I'm gonna roll on the action table because I think it's time to do some interrogation. Uh, although there's no direct ones over here, I think it's pretty, sh pretty clear that uh, we can always use the strength as intimidate to represent the interrogation part of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll on my strength. Actually, I need to see how difficult that is. Uh, first of all, to see you know how difficult it is to actually get information from these bird riders. So I'm gonna see how difficult is that. Ooh, five, extreme. It means that we need to fail a uh, uh, pass a five plus on our strength test okay we're gonna try it anyway so let's see oh no we failed so uh, first of all that means that our test fell until quest twist is down to five which we still have a lot to do we can do a, a few more but it also tells me that these bird riders even though we uh, we try to interrogate them, they are either they don't know any information or they still refuse to tell us who is behind the rivalry of the unlicensed surgeon. Okay, right, so uh, I guess we'll just leave it for now, but that means that our rival actually have a really strong influence on his minions, which is not a good news. Okay, so uh, back to the board game phrase, we are going to uh, move into the bandit camp. And uh, this is where a, a we have, um, it's actually not a current settlement, because it's a danger level of four, uh, and we will actually First of all, see what kind of danger cards we're going to get. You have an uneasy feeling, like something horrible is about to happen. Okay, so obviously this is a 5 plus, uh, uh, sorry, a 6, because uh, we don't, we're not in a perilous 
location so we are not going to trigger any event or any monster but the problem is we will need to reshuffle our danger card decks which means that we'll put these back into our deck so i have done that and uh it's time to enter the role playing phrase so uh inside the banter cam um, I guess it's a good time for us to check some random um, event happening there and also what we see in that location. So uh, what I'm going to use is obviously the, uh, the location generator and uh, obviously the bandit camp is an outdoor area so I'm going to use road, path and wide instead of the settlement. And I am actually gonna check what we see, what kind of location we have there. It's 2D6, so a seven. A, ah, this is actually a weird tower instead of white tower. Uh, so we actually see a tower, which is actually uh, a, uh, a construct. Uh, so it's a living being rather than a actual tower. But, you know, that's fine. And we're going to also check on the random event in the exterior location in Highlands as well to see what's going on there. A9, which is a caravan attacked. Okay, so uh, that is fine. So I think that means that the bandit cam on, on our way there, we see actually a weird tower. Uh, attacking a caravan so um, I'm not sure if we're gonna do anything so I'm gonna have a think and I'm gonna kind of come back on that 